Hey everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. You know, light sports kind of sort themselves into various categories. At the low end, you've got the low and slow fun flyers like the Cub clones, and at the upper end, you've got some pretty fast uh, European imports like this Bristel behind me. I'm going to take a ride in this with Lou Mancuso, see what it can do. This airplane is kind of being pitched as a performance cruiser. It's got a pretty good cruise speed, at least about 120 knots and maybe a little bit faster than that. Now we're recording this ahead of Sun and Fun, so if you want to get a look at this airplane, check it out at uh, Paradise City down by Jan uh, Dan Johnson's tent. Meanwhile, Lou's going to fire it up. We're going to take a ride. The Bristel started in uh, 2007, created by Milan Bristella, one of the prime aeronautical engineers that designed the Piper Sport went on his own and implemented 18 different modifications and improvements that he wanted to do to the Piper Sport. And that has evolved into the Bristol and what you see today. They're at 250 in their production. They just uh, doubled the size of their factory, which is absolutely gorgeous. And they're doing about 80 planes a year now. The plane is all metal and it's made of four grades of aluminum. 6061 aluminum, same aluminum used on the space shuttle, and this plane is uh, upwards to 100 pounds lighter than some of the competition because of the different grades of 6061 aluminum. And then he uses carbon fiber extensively on the rudder, the cowling, the propeller, the uh, rudder pedals, uh, just a lot of carbon fiber throughout. But the basic construction is all metal with uh, AN hardware, uh, U.S. steel, U.S. hardware, uh, and the edges of the aluminum where they overlap are beveled to prevent any moisture to get in. The wing lockers, which are a really unique uh, item that were on the Piper Sport, are also on the Bristol, and, and they're waterproof on the Bristol. The steerable nose wheel was added uh, to the Bristol over the Piper Sport, which makes the ground handling nicer and safer on a landing if you were to lose a brake. The landing gear is slightly changed design. The gear legs are more robust. The nose wheel has a dual shock absorber in it to make it more robust. The handling characteristics are, are better harmonics, uh, rounded fuselage, better in turbulence, significantly better climb rate because of the lighter weight, and it's faster. The wing is three feet shorter than the Piper Sport, so this truly achieves 120 knot cruise speeds where the Piper Sport was getting maybe 107, 110. So, so it's fast, comfortable, it's wider, it's 51 inch, widest in class. The avionics improvements have been just phenomenal. The, we say the Garmin avionics will make you gleeful. They're just spectacular. So you got great radios, great plane, wide, eight hours of gas, plenty of endurance. Lightest Bristol we have weighs 675 pounds, had a 645 pound useful load. We've had uh, some at 720, which give you a 700 pound useful load. When you put the fuel injected engine in it and a lot of avionics, the weight starts to get up. And this plane has the fuel injected avionics, uh, fuel injected 912 IS Sport engine, which weighs like 30 pounds more than the carbureted engine. And it has the full Garmin suite of avionics, autopilot, whatever. And this one's pre-wired for a parachute. And this one weighs 777 pounds. Bristel, we talked about the uh, avionics a little bit before we took off. This has the Garmin Touch in it. Is that, uh, there are other options, but is, is the Touch going to be the main thing in this airplane? Every plane we've done in the last year and a half has come through with the GPX Touch. Okay. We, we say the Garmin avionics will make you gleeful. <laughs> they're, they're just wonderful. Now, uh, in this case, we have uh, two displays. Will they all have two displays, or you have the choice? Some people order one. They just save uh, the other five, six grand for the second display. Let's talk a little bit about the autopilot. Uh, it's a really a complete um, three-axis autopilot uh, with envelope protection. Yeah, we start with the blue level button. Just hit that, that'll keep it level. And uh, if you don't have a level button engaged, if you overbank or overpitch, it offers some correction. With the autopilot on? 
with the autopilot off. With the autopilot off, you have the electronic stability protection portion, where if you get over a 50 degree bank, the autopilot will come on, take out the bank. If you get lower than 40 knots, the autopilot will come on, pitch down. If you get over 120 knots, the autopilot will come on and pitch up to yeah. protect you to keep you in a safe envelope. Uh, and it's worth pointing out that it does that whether the autopilot is on or not. Right, the autopilot comes on with that. When it's set, it puts the autopilot on and engages the trim to protect you. Now, is that going to be a standard feature or is that an option? Standard. Okay. Now, uh, tell me about uh, the potential for flying this uh, uh, IFR. You, you, uh, the, the, the company's about to approve uh, IFR but not IMC, is that correct? So that means it can be used as a uh, trainer. Correct. And if you make it a ELSA, then you can certify an IFR as long as you meet the FARs. And to meet them, you need to meet a TDOT, you need a 24-month static system check, you need a certified piece of avionics such as a DTN-625, which gives you WAP approved vertical guidance uh, GPS. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the performance of this airplane. This is a fast airplane for LSAs. Uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, they kind of sort themselves into uh, various categories. So this is at the kind of the slick, fast end of the spectrum. Tell me a little bit about how you fly this thing, what kind of performance you get out of it. Well, generally, I don't fly to go slow. So I fly at the top of the green, which is your maximum allowable power, which I'm bringing it up to now. I was flying at loafing along four gallons an hour, which the fuel-injected uh, version, if you're at a modest power setting, only burns four gallons an hour, which gives you an eight-hour endurance. But now I'm bringing it up to the uh, top of the green, and the plane will accelerate to 120 knots. And uh, so 120 knots, and uh, what's our true airspeed here? It looks to be... Right now, true airspeed is 125. Uh, ground speed is 107. Indicated is 119, going to 120. And we have a fuel flow of just right around five, five gallons. Five gallons, yeah. And then about a fuel on this airplane. How much total? 32. So, and, so uh, it holds generally uh, over six hours again. And that's in uh, two tanks, equal size tanks? 16 and 16. Okay. In the United States, we're, we're usually selling them decked out. The least expensive one we sold is 145000 and the most expensive was 220000 Average is about 180, and they really load them up with nice equipment. So if, you, if you're hitting that $220,000 invoice, what have you loaded it up with? You had IFR certified GPS, you had second comm radio, intercom, uh, turbocharged engine, the deluxe, deluxe paint, deluxe interior, um, just about all the options on the sheet. Okay, well thanks very much for the demo, Lou. My pleasure. Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb. You can find a full review of the Bristel in the April 2017 issue of Aviation Consumer. We're at Web and Aviation Consumer. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching.